His Excellency Salvadori Shikitano, President of the ICAO Council, Excellencies, Ministers, Presidents, Chairmen, and DGs, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to the United Arab Emirates. It's my greatest pleasure and honor to welcome you all on the behalf of the United Arab Emirates Government to the high level UAE Civil Aviation Cybersecurity Forum with the theme The Importance of Cybersecurity in Civil Aviation. Aviation cybersecurity is a global and cross cutting domain that involves all aspects of civil aviation, including aviation safety, security, air navigation capacity, and efficiency. It also extends to the commercial and economic interest of stakes and stakeholders to ensure business continuity of air transport operations. Therefore, it requires extensive collaboration between stakeholders in all aviation disciplines to safeguard the civil aviation against any cyber threats. The Cybersecurity Forum is held under the World Government Summit 2022 and the high-level international program for civil aviation leaders. Hosting the event in Dubai Expo 2020 is a reflection of the UAE government's support to the international collaboration efforts and stakeholders to overcome the ever-growing cybersecurity challenges facing the civil aviation sector. This event also supports the implementation of the ICAO General Assembly Resolution A40-10 regarding addressing cybersecurity in civil aviation, which aims to develop mechanism to help count countries define aviation cybersecurity strategy and develop a system to confront cybersecurity threats. Our view is that the international civil aviation sector is a whole unit with inseparable components. Any challenges that faces the regional or international sector will affect us at the local level. The opposite is equally true. The UAE government is working with the ICAO, the ICAO member states, the international and regional organizations and industry partners to build a safe and secure civil aviation environment that derives economic growth create jobs and positions us as, most, as more competitive on the world stage. Air transport is a vital industry that contributes substantially to economic development and improved living standards. I'm sure that this forum will provide us the enough opportunities to work together to face emerging cybersecurity challenges and positions ourselves for the future. Finally, I would like to thank you for participating in this forum and wish you all productive discussion for safer and secure civil aviation and pleasant stay in the land of hospitality, your second country, the United Arab Emirates. Your uh, Excellency Abdullah bin Tukur al Mari, Minister of Economy of the United Arab Emirates, Your Excellencies, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. It's my great honor and the pleasure to join you here in Dubai for this important and very timely event. I would like to express, first of all, my deepest thanks and gratitude to the government of the United Arab Emirates and its General Civil Aviation Authority for the warm welcome, exceptional arrangements, and very generous hospitality. I wish also to underline that after almost two years of virtual meetings, it is a real pleasure to restart meetings in person. Thanks to the effective health measures put in place, we can begin to see the light of the end of the tunnel. Cybersecurity is a key priority for major public and private organizations uh, of the world today. But we also need to ask ourselves why it is especially crucial for civil aviation. Consistent with the preamble to the Chicago Convention, the safe and secure crow of civil aviation has been and continues to be a fundamental priority for the nations of the world. A transport is vital as a catalyst for the sustainable socioeconomic development of civil societies and plays an essential role in helping people and business and cultures to connect and unite by air to the wide-ranging mutual 
benefits. Technology and innovation are the very heart of these core benefits for aviation. And together, they have allowed this sector to increase its capacity and efficiency at the service of our society. While at the same time enhancing system safety, security, and sustainability. While considering and appreciating these achievements, we can sometimes forget that investments and actions supporting the technological progress have largely taken place in distinct domains. This process of the time has left us with a backbone comprising of both new and the legacy systems, or an information architecture most commonly referred as a system of systems. Legacy systems, most especially, can contain outdated hardware and software that is not always easy to replace. They can pose inherent security vulnerabilities, being unable to accommodate latest security and encryption best practices. Recalling that civil aviation has always been an attractive target for terrorists to the high media exposure and key roles in national aviation and the global economy development, these vulnerabilities can pose serious and difficult to remain concerns. When COVID-19 struck, it brought international aviation virtually to a standstill. However, in spite of the sharp decline in traffic and operational activities worldwide, it is not worth it that cyber attacks targeting civil aviation continue to increase during the pandemic period. The pandemic has also fostered a significant public expectation of touchless technologies uh, to make the official traveler experience healthier and safer. Meaning that we face an entire new wave of compartmentalized digitalization and still further system ecosystem vulnerabilities uh, arising. Recognizing the seriousness of these threats to our network and to safety and security for the billions of people who operate and connect with us, uh, with it. ICAO has been at the forefront of addressing uh, cyber threats to civil aviation since 2005. During that time, we have led the development of international cyber security standards, recommended practice, and guidance material. And we have supported the engagement of states, for example, through the adoption of several important international uh, declarations on aviation security, cyber security, including the one adopted here in Dubai in 2017. The 40th Assembly, ICAO Assembly held in 2019, acknowledged that the cyber attacks can simultaneously affect a wide range of aviation areas. The Assembly states therefore highlighted the need for a global adoption of the Beijing Convention and the Protocol of 2010, adopted a new global aviation cybersecurity strategy and related the roadmap, and called on ICAO to develop a mechanism for addressing cybersecurity in civil aviation that assure a holistic and overarching approach to the topic. This, uh, took effective, extensive deliberations and the consultations between ICAO Council and the Air Navigation Commission and the Secretariat, of course, and resulted in the design of an innovative and what must say unprecedented solution in ICAO. Uh, this led the organization to establish a new cybersecurity governance with uh, the participation of a uh, cybersecurity panel composed by experts from states. And we are pleased that we have a, a reasonable uh, regional representation in this cybersecurity panel. And uh, in this way, we will have a more, let's say, uh, comprehensive overview of a cybersecurity activity in ICAO. And we'll have the opportunity to support member states in the implementation of their 
um, strategies. In, ACAO, in addition, ICAO has been developing uh, uh, an international aviation trust framework to support the cybersecurity and the cyber resilience for civil aviation in the navigation and navigation domain. This is a very important project, probably the most important in recent years, to support the secure global exchange of digital aviation information. And it will include procedures, technical specifications, and guidance material supporting the current and future global network requirements. In the next few months, ICAO will be in the position to outline the governance of this International Aviation Trust Framework. Although a lot has been done, however, a lot still remains to be done. In closing, I would therefore like to thank all states and the partners who have been supporting and continue to support ICAO's work on cybersecurity and cyber resilience. Assuring a harmonized, consistent, and holistic approach to aviation cybersecurity and the cyber resilience has never been more important. And I wish to underline that the cooperation, as mentioned today in the roundtable, is fundamental in this sector. And in this sense, I'm very pleased to mention again the MOU that I had the opportunity to sign yesterday with the government of the United Arab Emirates is just a sign to show that it's important for all organizations and member states to share information, to share experiences, to share lessons learned, and to help all together to achieve progress in cybersecurity. As we saw this morning in the round table, nothing can be done sectorially, first of all, and nothing can be done in isolation. Uh, for this reason, there are countries or reasons that have, have made more progress, others that still are progressing, only through cooperation we can work uh, and we can address this uh, threat for the, of the 20, 20, 21st century. ICAO is at your disposal to support this process. ICAO is composed by member states. ICAO is uh, committed to support the implementation of your strategies and to create a framework for international coordination. In this context, I was also to encourage all states to adopt the Beijing Convention, a protocol of 2010, I reiterate it again, and to enhance the global legal framework for dealing with the cyber attacks on international civil aviation and uh, on crimes. Finally, I wish to reiterate my sincere thanks and appreciation to the United Arab Emirates for hosting this important leadership summit while wishing all the participants a very successful and fruitful deliberations. Thank you very much for your attention. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, terrific, as Salvatore said, it's terrific to see everyone in person. I appreciate the opportunity to be here to keynote uh, this World Government Summit on Cybersecurity. And I'm very inspired um, by uh, this vehicle for government innovation and cooperation and applaud Chairman Al Gregawi for his leadership in that regard. And I particularly thank uh, Director General His Excellency Saif Mohammed Al Sawadi uh, for the invitation to speak here today and the UAE General Civil Aviation Authority and the Minister of Interior for their partnership. I'd also like to acknowledge all of you, my esteemed colleagues, for participating in this summit. We have all seen the benefit of a connected cyber infrastructure but along with those benefits comes the reality, unfortunately, that our connectedness could be used against us with potentially catastrophic results. That is why it is so vital for us to come together as an international community to improve global aviation cybersecurity. As I'm sure is the case for you, TSA's cybersecurity uh, efforts are critically important to our mission success, and our focus on cybersecurity has grown tremendously just in the past few years. One thing that has remained constant is TSA's willingness and desire to engage with our partners to strengthen and improve the resilience of the global aviation system. We are all learning and can be collectively more effective by acting as a global community to collaborate on our mutual goal of better aviation security. Four years ago, TSA developed a cybersecurity roadmap 
to guide our strategic approach to reducing cybersecurity risks across the transportation network. It is available on our public-facing webpage, and, and we have increasingly posted our strategy documents on our public-facing webpage um, for people to see and for people to comment on. We feel it's imperative for us to have a comprehensive, sustainable cybersecurity strategy in place with countermeasures that are based on risk and deployed at every level of our agency. The roadmap is a five-year strategy with six goals for action. Uh, to assess the cybersecurity risk to TSA, to protect our information technology systems, to protect tr the transportation sector uh, critical infrastructure within the United States, to respond to, to cybersecurity incidents, which as Salvatore said, we're seeing more and more often uh, in, our, in our system, to strengthen the security and resilience of the cyber environment, and to improve the management of TSA and the transportation sector cybersecurity efforts. It also highlights the importance of working with partners and stakeholders to drive better cybersecurity by promoting the development and adoption of best practices and international standards. This past year, guided by that roadmap and input from industry stakeholders and other partners, TSA announced a series of new security directives to our most critical surface transportation and aviation system operators. The goal was to provide our most critical industry stakeholders with specific resilience and mitigation measures to strengthen their cybersecurity posture. In addition, just last month, TSA issued information circulars to all of our domestic industry stakeholders that provide recommendations to further strengthen their preparedness and mitigation capabilities in response to new threat information. These actions are among several steps TSA and the Department of Homeland Security are taking to increase the cybersecurity of all United States critical infrastructure. The operational framework to do this is so very important, and allow me to provide some examples of that operational framework. Let me begin first with zero trust. We are embracing zero trust principles. Zero trust is a security concept centered on the belief that organizations should not automatically trust anything inside or outside of its digital perimeters and instead must verify anything and everything trying to connect to its system before granting access. President Biden issued an executive order last year on cybersecurity, and TSA has developed a strategy to enable zero trust across our networks that protects identity, devices, networks, applications, and data. It is vital that we protect our internal cybersecurity systems against degradation, destruction, and malfunction and adopting a zero trust model is key to this effort. One of my highest priority technology efforts is to bring, uh, is to drive our technology into an open architecture. Uh, this framework uh, will be used for our security operating system overall within the United States. Open architecture has significant benefits, including increased security effectiveness, an improved passenger experience, better system efficiency, and it drives innovation and enhanced competition. Open architecture, though, must be implemented in a cyber secure manner so that, so that it can yield benefits to all of us. As we work toward greater checkpoint automation, we are actively working to implement open architecture principles into the security screening system. This includes a requirement for open data formats such as DICOS, which is an acronym for Digital Imaging and Communications in Security. Um, for standardized interfaces and for establishing an operation, operationally viable and cyber secure approach to execution. We're actively working to implement open architecture concepts across our capability areas, including accessible property screening, on-person screening, and identity verification. In adopting open architecture, we have incorporated cybersecurity into the development at the very beginning. Open architecture will ensure our agility in responding to emerging threats, enhance our ability to implement new and innovative solutions, and strengthen our resilience across the enterprise. We continue to pursue advancements in technology and procedures to provide the most effective security possible. Artificial intelligence is a promising horizontal emerging technology that plays a vital role, not only in our operational technology, but in our vetting systems, our staffing programs, and all aspects of agency operations. 
The potential impacts from artificial intelligence on aviation security make it imperative for TSA to take a proactive role in the use of artificial intelligence systems and to contribute to the international conversation on the secure use of this transformative technology. We continue to explore the future state of passenger screening experience and where artificial intelligence will improve our capability, most especially in cabin baggage screening using computed tomography x-ray systems. As more countries adopt similar capabilities, resolutions like ICAO's addressing cybersecurity in aviation will further aviation security around the world. I'm particularly encouraged by the document's emphasis on adopting risk-based approaches to protecting critical aviation systems, encouraging information sharing partnerships between government and industry, establishing policies to promote resilient systems and ensure data integrity and data confidentiality, and promoting a cross-cutting and holistic approach to developing the cybersecurity framework. It is vital that we continue to work together to highlight and mitigate the global cyber threats to civil aviation. Together, we can help ensure a strong future for civil aviation around the world. And I thank our hosts for their tremendous hospitality here today at Expo 2020. And I thank all of you for being present in thought in, and in action in this important endeavor. And as all of us experience in any conference like this, a lot of work gets done in sessions like this one a lot of work gets done on the sidelines. And I appreciate um, the opportunity to engage, like I said at the very beginning, face to face with my colleagues and, co and counterparts, and assure you of the United States commitment um, to be cooperative and transparent and to be an eager participant uh, in your deliberations. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to thank you, the Civil Aviation, uh, General Civil Aviation Authority of the United Arab Emirates for the invitation, and of course, for the warm welcome. A great work be done by uh, the state in conveying this group here together to discuss about cybersecurity. The second point is that, of course, very happy to see all of you face to face. Some of my colleagues here, I didn't have the opportunity to see during my time in, in uh, Montreal, and I have the opportunity to see you here. That's why it's good to see that the countries are opening and we have this possibility to see one each other. A lot of learning process this morning in our discussions about cybersecurity, and of course, beyond that, in other, in other panelists that discuss the blockchain that will only it will affect our lives in the future, going uh, to the cryptocurrency and others and that, of course, you turned our lives uh, vulnerable in other ways, but also uh, very excited. Cybersecurity becomes to increase an important business necessity across the world, and uh, many organizations around the world are now employing chief information security officers as part of our, the global leadership teams. The number of the attacks have significantly increased in recent years and become more challenging to keep up the hackers as they become more sophisticated in their approaches. Aviation is now an attractive target with a large data set that airports and airlines manage and the operational impact that the cyber attack can have in our industry. The greatest risk for airport operations, according with ACI World, airport members include phishing attacks, malware, hacking, and insider attacks. In a survey that we conducted, 61.5% of our airports were targeted by a cyber attack, with 50% of them saying that there are had some increase of temps during the COVID-19 pandemic. Just in context, we have 2,000 members around the world that represent 96% of the global traffic. Means 61% of almost the world global traffic was affected by cyber attacks. The pandemic also changed our way of work, resulting in remote and distributed working, increased the reliance in technology and record levels. During 2021, there have been a number of attacks in branches and ransomware being main methods used by the hackers. A number of the attacks has taken place in the supply chain side of airports and airlines, 
showing the robust security programs should be in place at the industry level and not only in individual players. The International Civil Aviation Organization recognized cyber attacks as a growing concern and has upped its rating to medium on the risk register for an act of an awful interference. Cyber attacks in aviation are an opportunity to bring airports to a standstill. A number of the airports have reported attacks that have brought to the flight information display screens, causing operator havoc. These attacks were designed to cause passenger inconvenience and generate financial losses to the airports, but could be much worse than that. A mitigation measures, airports need to develop robust security programs, including a culture of being cyber aware, enhancing by significant street monitoring activities, airports should develop a full documentation on response plans to cyber attacks and ransomware approaches. It's essential that airports work with the aviation stakeholders to establish a program of cyber resilience and maintain robust and efficient cybersecurity defenses. ACI World will continue to support airports and advocate for international cooperation joining up governments and current and practical policies to address cybersecurity, cup of them practical solutions for information sharing, oversight, capacity building, and training. Cybersecurity has been an important topic for ACI members for many, many years. Airport Information Technology Standing Committee has a topic that their radar and one of their core focus are areas allowing ACI to develop guidance and best practice for airports. ACI is also partnership with Aviation Information Sharing and Analysis, Isaac mentioned this morning. In addition, when agreement with Airbus to provide advisory services in cybersecurity. This relationship produces as executive level cybersecurity self-assessment questionnaire allowing airport executives to identify their levels of cyber resilience, initiate a development of the roadmap for creating a cybersecurity strategy plan. ICI provides training for airports as well guidance through a cybersecurity handbook and a new cyber attack response plan for airport operations is current under development and will be published later this year. Finally, ACI is a member of a newly established cybersecurity panel at ICAO and will support the work led by ICAO and the states by bringing airport operational experience to the work of the panel. Thank you very much.